What's up guys? Welcome to the Crypto Savvy channel. I'm Craig and we're going to talk about the charts. Look at what's going on. First, we're going to take a look at the Dow Jones, then the DXY, and then of course, Bitcoin. Um, we're going to take a look at that weekly Bitcoin RSI. I've talked about that for over a year. I'm going to tell you what to watch for on that weekly RSI to let us know when the bot false bottom is signaled, not the bottom. Everybody's going to scream that it is the bottom, but I'm going to show you why I don't believe it is. And we're going to kind of pay a lot more attention on that weekly RSI today. So in a lot of these uh, the questions that I'm getting in these videos, guys, watch my videos from all the way back. You'll get the answers. Um, I talk about the same stuff every day. Some stuff, some days I leave certain things out, but nothing has changed at all. Go back and watch my videos. Your questions will be answered. I just, um, I, I get a lot of the same questions that I've answered a million times. Watch the videos. Um, watch every day. It keeps you updated. Some days I forget to mention certain things, but all in all, absolutely nothing's changed. Everything is playing out exactly as we've expected. So let's take a look at what's going on and we'll go from there. So here we have the uh, Dow Jones, as you guys know, 33,490 to 335. I don't believe we'll get above that. If we do, then we can start looking for some maybe more bullish targets. But all in all, uh, I'm still looking for much more downside in the Dow, right? I think I think very ugly things are coming. I've talked about it for a long time. The biggest money grab in history started over a year ago. I think we got about another year to go for it. So be careful, guys. Here's the dollar, the DXY index that everybody is super bearish on. It, the dollar is going to zero, blah, blah, blah. We've heard this many times over the years, right? There's always some kind of fear in the dollar. Why do they put fear in the dollar? So you get out of the dollar so they can get in the dollar when everything dumps and they get back into everything that dumped. They make a bunch of money. Everybody else is screwed because uh, they were buying the top to get out of the dollar, right? Over and over. This has happened over and over over history, right? And everybody's always talking about buy gold, buy silver, the inflation hedge, and now they're talking about Bitcoin's an inflation hedge. Well, you see how that worked, right? When they're screaming to buy things, there's people selling those things, right? So if that stuff was gonna, gold and silver was a great hedge and it was gonna rise forever, why would they be trying to push selling it so hard, right? You guys gotta pay attention to what's going on. Anyways. Enough of my little rant. As you can see, the falling wedge here that we've talked about forever, we broke out way back here. And of course, Bitcoin was only in a bull market its whole entire life. And I think it's about to see its first real bear market, right? So you can see the yellow and green lines I have here. See, this green line was, you know, once we broke through, got support, huge support. And then we got resistance back here. And then once we got above support again, resistance we are above it and if you look at where the red line is where it got rejected back here in the 80s we did the same thing right we blew through the green came back got rejected at the red came down and boom to the moon i think that's what's happening right now and as you guys know my target has been still is 122 for our first major resistance uh, once we break through that and get support i think i believe we'll see the dollar go to 170 to 180 range right Bitcoin in the four hours. So as you can see, the VRVP, which used to be called the VR or VPVR. I don't know why they changed it. But anyways, uh, we're right there at that high volume node, right? Just bouncing around in it. But we've also been keeping an eye. This is the four hour. We'll take a look at the daily in a minute. From this swing high to this swing low, our retracement, right? I had told you if we get above the, we talked about this yesterday, if you watched. We got above the 0.236, which is 16,775 to look for the 200 EMA. Bam, we nailed the 200 EMA, getting rejected. Now, if we get back below this 16,775, that was the end of the move. We continue down, right, to come back down to these lows. And as you guys know, here are my targets, just simple measured move targets. First one being 16,132. Then after that, the measured move of this bigger rising broadening wedge, bring that down, and that one's six or 15.8. Once we break the 15.8, look for this bottom here, 15.2. Once that's broken, it'll be pretty quick run back to at least 14.550, then maybe a little bounce from there, come back up. We'll take a look at it all in the bigger picture. But also if we look at this channel, right, right here, and we bring this down. If we do break down past that 15.2, that gets us to about 12, 
five, right? Look at the daily. We were looking at this descending triangle. And guys, like I said, people talk about uh, you repeat every day, repeat every day, because I'm not changing my opinion every day like the other channels that have continuously called the bottom all the way down, which I told you back in 2021. That is what they were going to do on every bounce, right? And they claim to be professionals, but yet they... They never sold. They never took any profit. We're 70 something percent down, guys. Think about it. Anyways, so this is what I'm looking at. This is our measured move from the triangle, right? Is a sending triangle breakdown that we did come back up and retest right here, right? Perfect retest right there. If we did come back, we would have to get above this white trend line, which now is around 18.2 to even start to get bullish, right? Nothing to be bullish about here yet, guys. And another thing we've talked about is getting back down to retest this RSI trend line down here, which I do believe we will. Uh, we came up here. We've been getting rejected. Now, this is the daily. If you look, we're making higher highs in the RSI, lower highs in the price action, hidden bearish divergence. Although that doesn't count until we close. We'll see where we close. If we close around this, uh, 16, 8, 13 today, uh, that'll confirm that bearish divergence. Now that doesn't mean, or hidden bearish divergence, that doesn't mean we can't come up and come up and tag this 55 EMA at 17, two ish, but either way, um, still bearish guys, nothing's changed here. Nothing at all. Before we get into the other stuff, there's two things I want to mention. First, the sponsor of the channel, prime XBT by far my favorite exchange guys. They don't trade against you. None of the scammy wicks. Um, you can trade Forex, gold, silver, oil, S and P Dow Jones. There's also a free contest section. It's totally free. You can actually win real tradable funds if you win the contest. So you put in zero risk. Um, definitely check them out. If you haven't just remember on any exchange, don't put more than you're willing to lose on any exchange just in case. Right. Um, although I don't think anything's wrong with them, you know, anything could happen. Be careful with Binance, guys. I've been talking about Binance. You can go check my previous for like a month. Very, Be very careful with Binance, guys. I would not keep any funds on there. I could be wrong, but you're better to be safe than sorry. I would not. I repeat, I would not keep my funds on Binance. All right. This is my wife's webpage, inkerimage.com. Link down below. Also, PrimeXBT link down below. Uh, check out her webpage. She does this stuff all herself. Great way to help support the channel. and. She rocks. So anyways, let's take a look at, this is the weekly RSI. We're gonna take a look at this against Amazon too, but we've talked about this for over a year. Once this breaks and holds, right? So right now we're peaking above it again, right here. If this breaks and holds above here, then this could have been our false bottom. I don't believe it is, uh, but it, it could be. This weekly close is gonna be huge. We still got, what is today? Uh, is today Thursday or Wednesday, Wednesday. Um, I'm not even sure, guys. I don't even keep track anymore. But anyways, um, I think the weekly is still bearish. We, I highly doubt we'll close above this trend line. And we'll take a look at it against Amazon. But this is the, this is my drawing from months ago. Way back in here, back in October, we drew this in, right? This is what I still think is most likely going to happen. Once we get down past this 14.9, 14.8, come down to that 75 to 8,500 for the false bottom in February, get a rally up into, you know, April or May, back up into the 14, 15,000 range, and then continue down. I believe the ultimate bottom is going to be in September or October of 2023, and I believe it to be 35 to 4,500. Now, if it goes below there, there's also much lower targets, but this is what I'm looking at as of right now, right? Um, let's take a look at some other things here. So this is the Amazon compared to Bitcoin chart, and you can see down here, right? The Amazon weekly. Once this weekly RSI broke, I'm sure everyone got extremely bullish because that's a weekly trend and it broke in the RSI and that's huge. And as you can see, they got a rally, but only to come back down and make a lower low, which I believe is the same type thing we're going to see over here. Can you guys see that? Yeah. I believe it's the same type thing we're going to see over here. I believe we'll close our weekly below this trend line. And then sometime in February or March right here. 
And I showed you guys yesterday, it could be as low as like 6,000 here, but I'm still looking for 75 to 8,500. Um, I do think it'll be a good place to, you know, buy in and maybe hold on to for a nice 100% rally or so if it does play out like this. Obviously, none of this is financial advice. Um, but I do believe there's a good chance that's what we're looking for. So look for lows down there. It could be as low as, like I said, 6,500 or something, but I'm looking at 75 to 8,500. Uh, maybe placing some longs there or just buying some and holding them and, you know, at least uh, getting 50% of my money before getting back out and waiting for the lower lows. But this rally would get us like it did over here, uh, somewhere into, you know, 12 to 14,000, depending on how low it goes, right? So over here, this was about 100, I think 115% rally. And obviously, if that happens, it's they're going to zoom into the four hour chart and make it look like it's the going to the moon and just going to shoot straight up, which it won't, guys. This is a macro chart. Uh, we have to form a macro bottom. We'll take a look at that in the next chart. You can see down here, even in the MACD, uh, even the MACD is playing out almost identical, guys. Almost identical. It's crazy. So this is a bubble pop pattern, in my opinion. Now, what would invalidate this? Bef so before getting down to our lower lows, right? We would have to cross the 55 EMA. And right now, that's around 26,000 if it was to go straight up today, which is unlikely. But this continues to go down as the you know time goes. But if we cross that 55, then it invalidates all of this, right? So even if you were to wait to buy in until we cross 55 like it did over here, it may go a tad bit lower once it crosses that, but that would probably be a safe buy-in. So for me to buy a hold position, right? A huddle position. I I would wait till this 55 uh, is crossed or getting down to these lower lows. Reason being, I'd rather not buy here when I can buy a lot more down here or buy when I cross the 55. If it doesn't reach these and cross the 55 first, at least I'm safe and I, and I feel the bottom is in at that point, right? So, Let's gamble that way. And people say, oh, but you miss all that if you, you know, if it does go up from here, it's 10,000 more when you buy in. Yeah, well, there were people dollar cost averaging up here. I'm still be doing 100% better than all these other YouTubers that were screaming $100,000 Bitcoin, right? Um, and just like I talked about back here when I first made this chart in, in 2021, right, that each pump, everyone would get bullish, and then it would drop again, and they would have wished they would have sold, just like up here, right? When it when it broke this, well, we'll look over here now, but over here, none of this was here when we were talking about it, but you get your first low, and then I told you, just like here, you get a rally. Everyone will get super bullish. Everybody feels good again. Nobody sells only to make a lower low than they wish they would have sold up here, and then you get a little rally, and they still don't sell because it's going to the moon, and then... Boom, another lower low. And guys, you can look back at all the YouTubers back then. They may have changed the, the titles of their videos, but if you watch them, they were all calling for 100,000. Bottom's not in. It'll never go below 50. It'll never go below 40. It'll never go below 30. Uh, blah, blah, blah. We see this over and over and over again, um, and they keep doing the same thing, and then they still claim to be experts, right? If they were experts, they wouldn't have been telling people to buy all the way up here, all the way down, right? Oh, anyways, so this is the 10 year, 10 year roadmap, right? If it does play out, you can see right here, right? Inverse head and shoulders. And that took a long time. That took about uh, two years to form down here, almost two years, about a year and a half, somewhere in there. But that bottom took a long time. So it's not going to shoot up and go straight to the moon and you're going to miss out. Um, If you're if you're thinking like that or believing like that, you're probably going to. FOMO in and just keep losing money. And then when you get a drop, you're going to skip scared and sell and blah, blah, blah. Same story over and over, guys. I make this channel to try to help people from doing that stuff. Um, I'd done it in the beginning, right? When I started with penny stocks and stuff. It's not fun. Get rid of your emotion. Quit getting emotionally attached to any asset, right? Look at it for what it is. Charts. Charts tell a whole story, guys. News is noise. I don't pay attention to the news. I could care less. I mean, I'll watch it just to see what they're saying about stuff or whatever. But the 
Show me the charts. I'll tell you the news. I told you back in 21, bad news was coming. All the, you know, crypto scam washouts were coming, the altcoins. And guys, I would seriously, highly, my opinion, I will not touch altcoins. Um, I think most, if not all of them, are going to die, get washed away with the regulations coming. And yeah, that call that FUD, whatever. I think XRP is dead. Um, it is a security. If you look at what a security is, it is a security. It's going to get deemed a security. Will they pay to register as a security and continue on with it? Maybe. Um, but in all reality, guys, Ripple may be a good product for the banks. They don't need XRP. They do not need XRP. They can put, make whatever coin they want and run it on Ripple. Um, anyways, so if this does play out, 35 to 45 bottom middle of uh, or end of this year, September, October ish rally up. No new all time high for your cycle. If that's what you want to call it. I don't think it's going to go to a new all time high. I think we'll get to 35, 45,000 in the middle or end of 2025. People will be screaming 150,000, 200,000, 300,000 all the way up. Get a rejection here. Come back down middle or end of 2028. Uh, maybe should that be 27? Let's see. Oh, three, two, no, that would be about middle or end of 2028, 15 to 25,000 rally up, middle or end of 2029, 58 to 65k, another dump down to you know 25 to 35k in middle or end of 2030, and then rally and then new all time highs. If you watch over here, this took 10 years to make a new all time high, so. Uh, right, we made our all-time high in 21, so it could be 2030, 2031 before we break this high. Could be, doesn't have to be, but it's looking like that. So here is the, this red line. Actually, let me make this line a different color so you guys can see it better. It's going to make it white. See this white line across here, right? That's 20,000. This blue line right here, this is the weekly Amazon chart. So we broke 20 over here, right? I've been talking about possibly not seeing uh, 20,000 again until 2025. It is a good possibility. Is it guaranteed? No. It is a good possibility, though. And does that look so weird? Nope. Amazon did the same thing, guys. And yes, you can compare Amazon to Bitcoin. You can even compare it to a pet rock if you want because it's a market. Markets all react the same. Greedy people. The object of a market is to put your money in and pull more out. That's what a market is. Um, the markets anymore don't have anything to do with the company, the product, whatever. Uh, it's all about pumping the price and taking more money out than you put in. And if this does play out like this, 2025 would be when we break the 20K range and then obviously come up, maybe that'll hold the support. Maybe get a little dip down like we did right here in sometime in 2028, like I said. And then this top would be sometime in the September, October of 29. And then another low in uh, middle or end of October 2030. And then boom, then we make a real rally, right? But guys, this could take a long time. Um, but there's tons of money to be made. So just by watching this, right, if you trade it in, you know, the highs and lows here, just even bought in and sold, you'd make a killing, guys. This is huge opportunity. Call it doom and gloom if you want. Call it doom and gloom, and then you'll be doom and gloom if you're sitting, you know, buying a bunch and thinking it's going to 150000 uh, in 2025. You do you. I'm going to do me, but I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing. I'm going to give you honest review or honest look at the markets without uh, crap, hopium, hype, news, BS, bull crap. Um, I love you guys. Make sure you smash those thumbs up. Leave your comments down below. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.